experiences in university. So to start off, um, in high school I didn't take university courses, I took college courses and that was a mistake because my teachers thought that my learning level would be more college, more hands-on applicable rather than theory-based. And so instead of going to university right out of high school, what I did was I took college courses in high school and then I went to college. I achieved a high enough GPA to get into university and that's when the journey started. In my first year, one of my professors told me something that has stuck with me all the way until now. And it's that I feel like if you're an athlete, you really understand this, but when you're when you're an athlete and you go out to participate in an event, let's say track and field or soccer or swimming, or something like that, you go and you want to win. There's a competitive factor. There's an aspect of it that you train hard so that the day that the event you're able to do your best and uh, perform your best and each time you're trying to beat your own goal. Now with that being said, what my professor told me was that it's important that you realize that university is like the Olympics but it's for the mind. So don't go in there to university and try to think that okay well I'm going in here and I'm just gonna you know slide my way through. It's a very, it's being able to be prepared mentally and to train yourself mentally to be able to succeed in your career within university and in life general. University isn't a place where you get a lot of hands-on, it's more so theory-based. So you're going to be doing a lot of writing, a lot of reading, when I mean a lot of reading, I mean a lot of reading, a lot of reading, and some, some courses are more examination-based where you have, so let's talk support system. When you're in university, it's very different because you spend a lot of time commuting to campus, um, being on campus, um, and then your home life schedule and social work schedule is very, it's very complicated to balance, especially at first. So the best thing to do is to make sure that you schedule your studying time. Your studying time should be supported by your friends and family as you start to sort of like withdraw from them because you don't have as much time to hang out and to be involved. Just letting them know that, you know, I hope you guys support me, but I'm going to be going to school and I need this time to study. Um, with that being said, scheduling is very important because once you schedule your time, you're able to be able to dibble and dabble in different things such as work life and, and school life, social life. It might be less time that you spend now, but at least you're able to um, balance everything. Honestly, studying takes up most of your time. If you have one class a week and it's three hours for that lecture, you're going to be studying at least nine hours a week just for that three hour lecture. Scantrons and you're doing multiple choice and then you have true or false and then some short answers and then some courses like philosophy for instance is a lot of writing, writing essays. So being able to know that these are some of the skills that you need to work on right now so that when you're in your courses in school that you're able to have an upper hand on those that are as doing as well in those places it's very good for you. Let's talk about work and school life. So while some students choose not to work while they're in school and some choose to work while they're in school. A good idea if you're not working and you start school is to find a job on campus because they're more lenient towards the fact that you have a schedule within your within school and if you have exam dates they're very lenient towards taking the time you need to be able to study and prepare for your exam or your tests that come up. Also, with that being said, being able to know your schedule before looking for work is very important and get adjusted to your school schedule before you decide to go out and look for work. So what I mean by that is to be able to say, okay, I have a lecture at this time, I have to study for it. So let's say um, six hours in the morning I'm going to study and then I have my lecture, I go to lecture and then I have after, let's say, 3 p.m. I can work a shift. 
So being able to delegate that time with work is also very important because then you won't feel overwhelmed as you know that you need to factor in studying and going into your lectures and actually going into work. Participation. Participation in first year isn't really that big of a deal unless if you're told by your professor that participation is a big part of your grade. But as you got into your second, third, and fourth year, participation becomes something that's a lot more expected of you as a student. So with that being said, participation marks are as simple as attending your classes, going into your lectures, and being present. Once they know that you're there, they some of them take attendance, especially in the higher courses, you want to make sure that you are there so you can hear what they have to say about the work and also a lot of the time information about quizzes deadlines questions about material is said even if you're not the one that asks about it other people ask about it and you have a clearer idea of what you need to do and the expectations based on your projects and work so going into university my first day was nerve-wracking because I went to orientation and orientation was more so for I guess uh, students that are coming right out from high school and I was already a mature student so I was about 20, 23, 24 um, and yeah it was a bunch of high school students, it was awkward, um, a big group of people and then you learn about your program. It was interesting because I learned about my courses but for the most part I felt like I could have skipped orientation but if you're if you feel more confident and you want to know more about your what your course is going to be like it's a good idea to attend orientation um with that being said orientation is a great time to network to make new friends to meet people that are in the same course as you potentially in the same lectures and classes as you so it's a good idea to network during that time exchange uh, emails phone numbers social media whatever it may be just to keep in contact so you have a support system while you're in school Making sure that you set a schedule for yourself as to when studying is going to happen and when you know you have classes, lectures, you want to make sure that you prepare for each lecture. So reading your, your assigned readings or assigned chapters prior to lecture is always your best bet. Reason being is because you prepare yourself for the content that's going to be discussed in class. So if you have any questions or any comments or you want to start a discussion, now is a good time to do so because you've already read the material and you've made notes on it and you've studied it so you're very well versed for it. That also reinforces the amount of information that you're taking in into, into your brain as you're studying. If you read something, then you ponder on it, you think about it, and then you go into the lecture, it's more likely for it to stick for you to be able to remember the material that you're studying. And that helps with exams, testing, quizzes that might come up in your course. So when it comes to testing and memorization and stuff, what you really want to do is you want to be able to know what you're, you're getting into. So for multiple choice and for courses like psychology, you want to make sure that you're able to master memorization techniques. So Googling memorization techniques, Googling the content that you're looking at. So if you're not just somebody who can read literature and text and memorize it, if you have to watch it and do what you need to do, learn yourself to be able to learn better. So Don't Study Harder, Study Smarter is a really good book for those of you that want to learn tricks and tactics to be able to do the best and excel in your courses. That's something that I read in my college days before entering university and it really has helped. Um, I've learned a lot about myself and how I learn and I learn very differently from a lot of people. I need a lot of visuals and I like to ponder and think about uh, the text once I've read it and I like to write things down. Writing things down really helps me. Nonetheless, with that being said, being able to learn how you learn is one of the key aspects to success in university. Learning how you learn is very important. So I'm going to leave you with that. Don't forget to learn about yourself as you are the one that's going to be going through these new experiences in university and college. I wish you all the best in your post-secondary um, journey and I'll have to chat with you next time. Comment below if you have any questions or any content that you want me to speak on, and I'll do so. But until then, don't forget to hit that subscribe button 
and that bell so you know exactly when I post my next video and stay blessed.